Good afternoon. Welcome to the Angry Paper Review. Let's, shall we see what we're looking at today? Here we are, let me show you. This is, oh, come here. This is, this is my pile of papers that we could choose from. So, I'll shut my eyes and we'll do a random, see what comes up. What have we got here? Oh, let me just check we've got all of it. Right. My life with PTSD, no. Ah, oh, here we are. This is about turkey teeth. Here we are, right, right, right. So this is out of the Times magazine. Goodness knows when. A while ago. Anyway, it's a fearless expose of what goes on when you go and get turkey teeth. So let's see what they've got to say. But most importantly, let me give you my honest opinion as to whether or not it's what they're saying makes any sense, okay? I might try and shut that window because there's a bloke. We've got a building site, literally we've got a building site right behind us. There's nowhere quiet in the world anymore. So, at an, Insta at an Istanbul business complex, oh, they've got the big, you know, the big impressive opening paragraph. I'm in a gleaming consultation room. Blah, blah, blah. So, so and they talk about the person who set the thing up called Dentake, the largest provider of dental health tourism in Turkey. Teeth are estimated to bring in about 4.4 billion annually to the Turkish economy. Well, if you know anything about the Turkish economy, that's that's welcome, very welcome money. So, and they're planning to open a Harley Street clinic. Now, that's for initial consultations. So, that's quite interesting because um, the biggest problem with having your treatment done elsewhere in the world is aftercare. So, I'm not entirely sure that they are necessarily opening that clinic for... Uh, they probably will do a pre-consultation. But on the other hand, they... Um, I should imagine they'll also be handling any problems. I've, li I've literally had somebody ring up or get in touch with today email, say I've had an all on four. Will you, you know, have you got, do you look after patients who've had all on fours? Which is a bit of a funny question because patients who've had all on fours, they've only got four implants. Implants basically have one of two states, in or out. You know, they don't, they're funny, they don't get wobbly like teeth. Teeth get wobbly and then fall out. Implants stay solid as a rock until the day they fall out and then they just go and clonk in your breakfast bowl. So, um, yeah, so they're opening up in the UK. Now, the reason for the huge growth in turkey teeth are twofold. Social media pressure to have the perfect smile and price. The weak Turkish lira means that work in Turkey costs between 50 to 80 percent less than in the UK. The basic tooth clean I've just experienced was £75. At home it would be £125. Now bearing in mind this might have been written a year ago, um, that is bunkum. I mean, okay, if you're if you're a Sunday if you're a Sunday Times reporter and you live in London and uh, like Kensington, Knightsbridge or somewhere, and you go and get your teeth polished, then you might pay 125 quid. But but you know, really most people in the UK are not paying anywhere. Even now, even like two years later, still not paying it. Uh, probably our, our basic scale and polish is included with a checkup. And the checkup is 35 quid. And that includes the scale and polish, if it's minimal. If it's anything more than minimal, we charge 49, which means you end up paying um, 84 pounds for a checkup scale and a scale and polish. And x-rays, because the x-rays are included free of charge. So, so, so all of a sudden we've started off with this exaggerated cost of having treatment in the U in the UK which leads me to suspect um, that it may be that they're trying to this might be a puff for the Turkish clinic it may be that they're trying to say yeah you can save a lot of money by paying them 75 quid when you could have got it for 49 here locally 
Porcelain crowns that in Britain would cost between 1250 to 1832 are 250 pounds at Dentake. Now, yeah, I mean, 250 pounds is cheap for a crown. Uh, crowns, crowns in Britain do not cost, unless you're in London or Manchester or Leeds or somewhere, do not cost 1250 to 1832. Our crowns are, I think, six or 700, and they're ceramic, so then they're pretty good. Laminate veneers, 275 in the UK they are 1250 and 1600 so I'm quite happy to um, accept that treatment in Turkey is cheaper for the high-end stuff but then you've got on the on the other hand you've got um, there's two factors uh, and one of which is the um, sorry I'm just keeping an eye out because everybody's walking around me it's just it's distracting me so yeah, so so they've exaggerated the uh, domestic prices, but um, but then then again you get into the whole problem. They're not like for like, are they? This is the problem that the um, patients used to have when they used to say like, "Would you like a crown? You need a crown. You can have a crown on the NHS, or or you can do your crown privately." And that they used to say, "Why would I have a crown done privately when I can get one for much less on the NHS?" And the answer is they're not the same crown, but the patients didn't. They, they, they either didn't understand that or they, they would just pretend it to be dumb or just assume that I was just, you know, selling, selling my uh, book and, and uh, telling them that they would get more for more. But um, they are, Tur Turkish teeth are, you know, the most, I'd say the most unique thing about them is the colour. They are obviously Persil white, but then on the other hand, they are, they're, they're, for the most part, they're a pretty poor fit, and and also for the most part, if you're going to have you know like a full mouth's worth, they're going to be pretty poorly balanced in centric. And um, I've had to grind in sets of turkey teeth for people because when they shut their mouths, they only they only met on one side. Um, so um, you know, so the, a, a crown is not a crown is not a crown. So so with such apparent bargains to be had, people from all over the world. Blah blah blah. I've been descending on the birthplace of Heraclitus, Heraclitus, and Diogenes. So let's have a look. Far less discussed is the horde of Brits heading east, Hungary and India, in addition to Turkey, for starker reasons because they're unable to see an NHS dentist and can't afford private UK alternatives. So. Um, would you would you if you were an nhs patient and couldn't afford private treatment would you go to turkey i don't think i don't think that's the sort of people that are going i think the sort of people that are going are the sort of people that want quite advanced you know large re re restorative advanced restorative work but also like a bargain you know they also like to think that they they've had a bit of a a touch, a bit of a result, that they've got the dentistry cheaper and they've had a Turkish holiday out of it. That's basically what they they go for, and that's what the people who come to see me they they all say the same thing. You know, I got I got a quite this is too expensive to have this done in the UK, so I got it done in Turkey half price, and um, and and I got a free holiday out of it. You know, so. Research in February revealed that only 34% of adults have seen a dentist in the past two years. Those who can afford it have long used private dentists, but the costs, hundreds of pounds for a filling, as opposed to 65 20 on the NHS, make this option impossible for many. Well, first of all, it's not their only option. I mean, if you stay off of the cakes, the biscuits and the sweets, and the fizzy drinks, then you've got another option, haven't you, which is not to need any fillings in the first place. However, if you decide that, you know, to hell with it and you're going to eat what the hell you like and you end up with a load of, needing a load of fillings, then um, you can't beat the NHS on cost, which is £65.20 at the time of writing. But that's just not for one filling, that's for ten fillings. You have as many fillings as you like for £65.20. So hundreds of pounds for one filling as opposed to £65.20 for as many as you like or as many as you need. Uh, they've not made that comparison quite clear. The reason why that makes the um, the reason reason why that uh, the NHS is not uh, soaring off in terms of uh, 
doing fillings, it's because um, you can't do as many fillings as, as the patient needs for 65 pound 20. And yeah, yeah, I mean, I do know that's the, um, that's the uh, patient charge and not the fee, but you know, really the, the fee's not that much more. And the fee for 10 fillings on the NHS probably not much more than the fee for one filling privately. So, and I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, because I think private dentistry is overpriced. I think it's because um, to to do uh, to work on the NHS is like um, you're asking the impossible of dentists. You know, you can't say I want you to do ten things for which the market price is is one is is ten times uh, what you're going to get paid. So let's just I'm not going to spend all day on this, but let's just go through it. So. Mm. One patient was so she was so impatient for her treatment. I turned round and found she had started pulling out her own teeth. I presume that she'd been numbed up by this point. Five. And she'd been in pain for so long she couldn't wait any more. Yeah. This. I mean, you know, I don't. I don't see any evidence of this. I think this is all hyperbole. Many patients. Okay. Continues. Use pure alcohol as a local anaesthetic. Mm. That momentarily reduces the pain, but as you go on, it damages the teeth and gums and makes things much, much worse. Now, this is this is just an invented narrative. I can't, um, I can't subscribe to it. It says if you can't chew, you end up swallowing your food in solid pieces, which is terrible for your digestion. Well, I mean, I, I've known in my career many patients who had no teeth at all, and and who presumably mashed their food up between their gums or swallowed it in high pieces, uh, large pieces and had no trouble at all. No trouble at all. Eating certainly didn't affect their digestion. Human digestion is pretty impressive. Look at the state of me. I mean really it's a very very efficient system. Uh, you can swallow your food whole without any trouble at all. So uh, in Turkey uh, X was told he needed six implants at the back of his mouth and decided also to have eight veneers. See, right, so that's they've unsold him some veneers, haven't they? And this is not a patient who can't get treatment on the NHS at home. This is a patient who, who wants cosmetic work and has just decided that he's going to travel to Turkey because it seemed to him like good value. Um, I used the money I'd saved to look like Tom Cruise. <laughs> the total came to £8,000, including flights and accommodation, compared with 3500 for one implant back home. So that's uh, six six implants, eight veneers. I, I, push them. I don't know whether they are... Do you think they're implant-retained crowns? Or implant-retained bridges? Or, or an all-on-four? Three, it's not very specific is it i don't think it's an all on four if it's eight thousand pounds but then you've got that three thousand five hundred for one implant back home which again is like you know i don't know anywhere outside london that charges that sort of money we used to charge fifteen hundred we now charge uh, not including the crown probably nineteen hundred including the crown twenty five hundred certainly nothing near thirty five hundred in cardiff you have to go to the dentist for a contact come back in a couple of weeks here it's all done in just a few days. It makes it much easier to fit in around work. Yeah, okay. Well, fair enough. They have to do it all at once, don't they? Because, you know, honestly, irrespective of whether or not that's a good idea and whether that's a good way of doing things, that's the way it just has to be done, doesn't it? But that, I do appreciate that the patients like that. I mean, I reviewed a book by a guy um, in America who, uh, the million dollar solo dental practice, and uh, he made, um, you know, a million, he was turning over a million dollars a year. This is 30 years ago, um, by literally doing everything on the spot, just, just doing everything. Uh, you used to go in, have your checkup, all your treatment, and then go. Uh, so, so I do understand there's a big attraction for that. So, blah, blah, blah. Found the clinic after extensive research on social media. Fifteen people run its bells and whistles YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok channels. 
while a hundred other employees filled emails and WhatsApp inquiries to sending, asking potential patients to send in photos of their teeth and suggesting treatment options. Packages are negotiated where, when or where patients are collected from the airport, put up in Dentica approved accommodation, ferried to and from the clinics. And um, when they arrive, they have face-to-face -face consultations, X-ray and 3D imaging before a plan is agreed upon. Now, you know, this, this is, these are, uh, this is like shooting fish in a barrel, to be quite honest. Anybody who's flown all the way out to Turkey is not going to turn around and say, can I think about it? Or um, isn't that a bit much or whatever, you know, they're, they're, um, they're not going to say, can I have a 14 day statutory cooling off period? Well, I think about this, uh, it's it's very much wham bam, and uh, let's get it get it all stuck in. So, so. so let's have a look. Are they gonna are they gonna go over any of the negatives? Pay for the crowns. This patient seems stuck in just. 23 year old man who has to use chewing gum to stick crowns in, blah blah blah. He says, I'll have to go back to Turkey to get it fixed. And it's going to cost between 30,000 and 60,000. Yeah, so there's, I think the rest of that article is a lot of um, to and fro and about whether or not, you know, it's a smart thing to do. I, my, my personal advice is. He said that one of the quotes is that one in five people who'd had dental work in Turkey said they had to spend more than five thousand pounds getting it remediated. Um, but you know, I, I'm all in favour of personal choice. If it's informed and informed consent, and that's what they want, then that's fine. Is the is the very very ultra white look going to be in fashion? You know, in five years time. Like, you know, like your eyebrows up, all big thick eyebrows that thick, really thick meat in the middle and all the Botox lips all sticking out and all that. Is that, is that going to be in, still in fashion? And what's going to happen when, when people start coming in and saying that, um, they don't want really white teeth. So, so that's that. I mean, that's, I would say that's an overly favorable portrayal of what it's like to get your teeth done in Turkey. I certainly wouldn't have it done. I wouldn't have it done because, because, and I'll tell you how you can do the Turkey teeth test. Get a little fingernail. It doesn't have to be a long fingernail, just a fingernail. Just run it down your tooth like that down the side and you'll notice that it's completely smooth. When you've had Turkey teeth stick, stuck on, they're all slightly too big. So you can actually get your fingernail in over the top of them. This is after they've been glued in. You can literally get your fingernail in over the top, and then. But the problem is that that then traps food, it traps plaque, but then it makes the gums go red, and so the turkey teeth look even better, because not only are they really white, but your gums now are really blood red. So you can't wait. I'm just going to sit here, do things to a high standard, and and not worry about anyone who's been to Turkey. Um, they, 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 that's fine as long as they're happy. That's the main thing. Now, I'll do, we'll do one more, okay, because we don't want to get this too long, but I don't want to have it too short either. GP fees won't work, just ask dentists. You ask if a £50 charge, to, oh, this is the letters, Colin. 412, 4-12, December. You ask if a £50 charge to see a GP could be the bitter pill the NHS needs. NHS Dentistry offers a cautionary tale here. Dental charges were originally designed to discourage patients from seeking care. That's true, because um, the reason was that people were getting too many sets of free dentures made, so they had to bring in a charge to have dentures made to stop people collecting 50 sets. Uh, they give many on modest incomes a reason to think twice about attending. They are described by government as a contribution towards the cost of care, but over the past decade they have morphed into a substitute for meaningful state investment. So let's just deconstruct that, de unpack that a bit. So, so technically they are a success story. Well, I mean, compared to free, any charge is a success story. 
uh, basic economics tells you that anyone, um, uh, any any uh, demand and supply, demand will always be suppressed by by any charge. And certainly, if it goes from being free to even costing five pence, uh, you'll get fewer people seeking the service. Um, dental charges were so they, they give many on modest incomes a reason to think twice about attending. Now, the reason why they've worded it like that is because um, they know that um, uh, many people on low incomes, by which I mean in receipt of state benefits, don't pay. And so what they can't say is they, they, they deter poor people from coming because the really poor people don't, don't have the deterrence because they don't pay. So they've said moderate incomes. And the modest, modest incomes, they've said, is a term that is sort of a little cipher for something else, which means the people who say, I'm only just over the limit. I know I've got a little job and I earn X pound a week and I'm only just over the limit on benefits. I don't get anything, but I'm not rich, but I just can't claim anything. These are the people on modest incomes. So, so we're talking about people who, for one reason or another, are not able to claim free dentistry. But that also includes a large number of people who are not on modest incomes, but still think they should be entitled to free dentistry. So that's why, um, you know, you, you've got this sort of funny thing where someone will come in who thinks nothing about paying £20 a, a month towards their, um, their mobile phone, but won't pay £240 a year towards their teeth. Uh, because things are, are um, only valuable if they're useful and scarce. And your teeth are useful, but if you provide you've got a few, they're, they're not scarce. They, they derive far more utility out of their mobile phone than they do out of their teeth. <coughs> Until such time as they lose their teeth. And then they sort of tend to reassess their, their value um, their structures, you know. So they're, they're described by government as a contribution towards the cost of care. Well, I mean, originally they were just a contribution. That was when the government was paying the bulk of the dentist fees and the patient's charges were just a small amount. But of course, over the years, what they did was they pushed it and pushed it, didn't they? They pushed the patient's charge up, pushed it up, pushed it up. Until eventually, um, dentists started saying, well, look, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm going to get £100 for this job and you are paying £99 of it, right? I've got to tell you, so in return for that £1, that the National Health Service is putting in. We're going to have to use the materials that they tell us to. We're going to have to do it this way, that way, etc. So, so they got to a point where dentists were saying, well, I'm going to take you off the NHS because to be honest with you, I'd rather be, for the one pound I'm getting, I'd rather just be off the NHS and, and be king of my own castle, you know, have some autonomy. So then, then, then they had to put the patient's charges down a bit again. So they've settled at a sort of a steady state now, sort of a high tide line where if they put the patient's charges up any more as a percentage of the, the fee, then uh, the dentists would take all the NHS patients off the NHS. And if they put them uh, down any more, then um, the, um, they would um, obviously have to subsidise the treatment much more. But it's a, it's, a, you know, it's a little known fact that most of what the dentist gets... Um, is con constituted by two things. One is the um, the difference between what the patient pays and what the dentist gets, and that's usually quite a small amount. And the much larger amount is um, the the um, difference between what the NHS uh, authorises to be paid and what the dentist will get in the free market. So say say for example, it is a filling, let's just say, and then the patient's paying sixty five, and then the dentist I don't know get in. Well, a dentist get three UDAs, don't they, for a filling? Say 100 quid or something. And then, but then he would get 300 in the private sector. So when he does, an, when he does that NHS filling, what's happening is he's getting 65 pound off the patient, he's getting 35 pound off the NHS, and he's putting 200 pound in himself. <laughs> okay, that's where the subsidy comes from. Inflation busting charge hikes have left our patients paying more. Just so ministers can pay less. Yes, that's true. GPs should be on their guard when charging is suggested. This is a model that fails both patients and practitioners. 
That's Eddie Crouch, good friend of mine, chairman of the British Dental Association. But um, you know, okay, that's my that's my contribution on that. The outdated idea that the NHS is totally free at the point of delivery has been a myth since 1952, when charges were first introduced for dentistry, dentures and prescriptions. Now the time has come to introduce charges for both GP and hospital appointments, with suitable safeguards for those who cannot afford to pay. In particular, the scourge of broken appointments should be addressed by charges. Well, the only way you can do that is to charge people in advance for an appointment and then keep the money if they don't turn up. There's no way if someone fails, you're ever going to get any money. Right, so, yeah, so, basically I don't think that charging, I don't think charging, really they're just talking about charging in the context of uh, avoiding failed appointments, aren't they really? I don't think they're thinking of, but they, there's two ways that charges work, isn't there? One, they suppress demand, as we've we've agreed. And secondly, um, they also deter people from making appointments and then not keeping them. So, the, certainly with the making appointments and not keeping them, what you'd have to do is you'd have to charge a deposit. Um, and then, um, even if the patient was exempt, because uh, if you didn't, then exempt patients would be completely free to fail. To turn up because you've got no no there's no ransom is there and then as far as um charging charging for treatment i think that goes against the all the, all the principles of the nhs being free at the point of delivery so you you will um the problem you'd have with that is that um you're you're taking tax national insurance etc 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 giving it to the treasury to fund the service and you're also asking people to pay for the service themselves and so you'd, you'd have to square that circle before you did that. You'd have to explain to patients why they should pay their national insurance if they then also have to pay to use the NHS. It just it wouldn't work, would it? That's what they call the social compact between the uh, state and the citizen, whereby the state extracts taxes and, and gives them back in benefits. And you can't do, you can't extract the taxes and then say, no, sorry, you're going to have to pay for yourself. Anyway, that, that'll do for today. It's a lovely sunny afternoon and I've got a patient waiting for me. So I'll say, talk to you soon. Bye.